Okay, here's another video by request. This one is uh, I'm going to just talk about the very basics of phase lock loop circuits. Okay, um, phase lock loops are basically a, a circuit that allows you to to lock two signals together um, you know, to, in frequency and phase, ideally, and that can be used for a number of purposes for things like you know FM or AM, even AM demodulation, uh, frequency synthesis, tuning control, clock recovery, tone decoders, etc. Um, and all phase lock loops, you know, kind of start off with kind of a, a variation of this very basic block diagram. Uh, so there's a phase detector whose job it is to compare the phases of the two uh, AC signals that are appearing at the inputs and give you an output who, who basically, it's usually pulses, who typically the pulse repetition and uh, duty cycle is proportional to the phase difference at the two inputs. There's a couple of different phase detectors. We'll briefly look at those. So those pulses then, um, we're going to go into a low-pass filter. A low-pass filter's job is to essentially take out all the high-frequency components out of that and create a, essentially a, a near-DC control voltage that is used to adjust the tune input of a VCO, or voltage-controlled oscillator. A voltage-controlled oscillator, quite simply, is a, an oscillator circuit whose output frequency is directly proportional to the voltage, the control voltage at the tune input. Okay, so um, the idea here with this loop is that if a phase error is detected between these two, or phase offset is detected between the two inputs, that's going to create some pulses here that's going to get filtered to a DC control voltage that will adjust or change the frequency and phase of this oscillator and try to close that phase difference that exists between those two. So that's how the loop works. Uh, so it's really you know, quite simple. Um, and the idea typically is you might use this, you know, again, for a lot of these different applications. So let's take a look at a couple of these, you know, these circuits in more detail. The loop filter is really nothing more than a simple low-pass filter. In many cases, it might be a simple RC filter. So nothing really much more to say about that. And the idea, its job is just to take the pulses out of the phase detector and convert them into a control voltage to control the VCO. The VCO, okay, is uh, simply an oscillator whose frequency can be changed by some external voltage. And it can have a number of different characteristics. Um, you know, the control voltage can be moved up or down. And then the, the output frequency can sometimes be perfectly linear, it might have some offset to it, might even have a curve to it. The important thing here is that it needs to be monotonic over the range that where it's going to be used inside the loop, meaning that the slope always has to be positive. Uh, we can't have the thing curl over and come down because that would reverse the feedback in the loop and the loop wouldn't work. Another way to look at the way a VCO works or its behavior is if the input control input voltage say goes up linearly over time, then the output frequency would get faster and faster and faster over time. Okay, so that's a simple way to think about a VCO. So we can actually go take a look at that uh, here on the board. Uh, on this board, I've got uh, one of these guys, a CD4046. Very, very popular uh, CMOS integrated phase lock loop circuit. Okay, he's buried under there under all the probes. Okay, so we'll, let's go take a look at, um, at the VCO on that. So this guy right here is connected to this power supply that I can use to adjust the VCO's output frequency. And let's see which one it is I'm probing here. So this Let's take um, let's take this probe right here and put him on the VCO output. Okay, so that's on the VCO output. I'm also probing the VCO output on this frequency counter. Okay, so right here on channel one, let's just look at just channel one here. That uh, signal right there is the output from this VCO. Okay, I'm also going to take uh, this alligator clip here onto this voltmeter. Okay, so this voltmeter is measuring the voltage that I'm putting in from that power supply. Okay, so if I go grab the power supply and if I vary its voltage up or down, we can kind of see that on the voltmeter. Okay, and I'm going to continue to just kind of do the same kind of slow oscillation of this power supply voltage so you can kind of see the effect of what it does on the VCO output. Okay, so if we look at the scope, okay, we can actually see the frequency going up and going down going up and going down. And that's going up and going down in proportion to the control voltage I'm applying. If you look at the counter, you can actually see going down, going up, 
going down, going up. So pretty simple. That's all the VCO is. That's all the VCO is going to do for us, and that's that's really what's going on with that. So that's what the VCO is that's inside of this loop. So the output of the loop filter is going to drive that input and adjust the frequency and phase into the phase detector. Okay. So let's go disconnect some of these guys. Okay. And what we're going to do now is go take a look at these phase detectors and what they are. Okay. So we uh, phase detectors typically are of two types. Uh, one, the, they're literally called type one and type two. Uh, type one. Uh, is where the, uh, from a digital standpoint, it looks kind of like an XOR gate. For RF type applications, it's typically done with a balanced mixer. And the idea is, is that this type of phase detector gives you an output um, whose pulse width or duty cycle on the out output is proportional to the phase difference. So if you think about it from an XOR case, if these two signals were perfectly lined up, the, the two inputs would never be different and, you would, and the output would always stay at zero. Whenever the output, you know, the, the input voltages are different, then we're going to get a pulse out of the output. That's the way the ex exclusive OR works. We only get a one output when the inputs are not equal to each other. Okay. So if we take that, that you know, in this case I've got in one leading in two in terms of phase. We're getting this pulse out, and if we filtered that, we'd get some kind of a voltage that looks like this. So you can imagine this voltage will vary from ground to you know VCC. Okay, depending on what the phase difference is. In fact, that's another way to look at it. The vo filtered voltage output will be proportional to the phase difference of the input. Okay, and there's some advantages and disadvantages, you know, to each of these to this particular phase detector. But let's go see how that works. Okay, so I've got um, two signals going into here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the probe that I was using to look at the VCO output, and I'm going to look at that signal I've got going into channel two, to two, this input here. So I've got this signal generator that's generating uh, two signals, okay, both at the same frequency and phase, okay, and they're going into the two inputs of the phase detector for this CD4046 PLL. And this probe right here is looking at uh, that phase detector one output, okay. So if I put that up on the screen here, let's see, it's actually that guy right there. Okay, so um, right now these two signals are in phase, okay, and I'm out of the generator, so I don't really have an output. You can just barely see a couple of blips on there if you look carefully, all right? So if I go and adjust the phase, okay, of this signal, and let's uh, move that over here. Now if I adjust the phase of this signal, if you look at the signals themselves, okay, uh, if I adjust the phase, we can actually see in this case, the lower one is being advanced. That's going to come on sooner. So now, when that guy comes on, let's kind of expand this out. All right? That guy comes on first. That causes the output to go up. And then when the other guy comes on, it causes the output to go out. And if I adjust the phase back and forth, you can kind of see how that works. Okay. So now I'm lined up in phase. Go back. I'm lined up. I'm out of phase. Now what's interesting is that you can see, say, the duty cycle there. I'm about uh, 45 degrees out of phase there. Okay, but if I go 45 degrees the other way, okay, I get about the same result. Okay, so it really doesn't give you too much of an idea of whether you're leading or lagging. That's one of the downsides to this particular phase detector design. And because of that, because of the, you kind of have this reverse slope here, the, the loop, can, you know, you want to, you got to be careful about how you set this loop up so it properly locks. And it also leads to the reason why this, this type of phase detector will sometimes lock on a uh, harmonic signal. Now if we want to look at what that looks like if we filter it, the easy way is to just to put our meter on it because the meter movement will kind of form a low-pass filter. Okay, so if I stick my meter on there, so right now these signals are lined up, so I got very little pulses coming out, a very little voltage seen on my meter. If I adjust my phase again here, okay, I adjust the phase, we can see that voltage coming up on the meter because now I'm integrating that voltage. If I can bring this up even further, so I get about 50% oh, duty cycle there when I'm 90 degrees out of phase. There I am about half VCC. Okay. If I keep going in phase, okay, now I can get nearly on all the time and nearly, there I am nearly up at VCC. Okay. So we can kind of see if I adjust the phase, I can actually change you know, that voltage. And that would be the voltage out of the low pass filter that drives the VCO. Okay. 
So let me just set that phase back to zero here. Oops, let's go to zero, put that back to zero. Okay, so there we are back to zero, We've got kind of a DC zero output out of that uh, phase detector. So we'll pull that guy off. Okay, so the other type of phase detector, sometimes called uh, type two, also known as a phase frequency detector or PFD, it's a little bit more complex. There's actually some complex logic that goes on in here. We're not going to talk about that. But at the end of the day, the way it works is that uh, whenever, whichever signal is leading, whichever one comes on first, that's going to turn on either this P-channel device or this N-channel device. Okay. So if this one is leading, it'll turn on the P-channel. If this one's leading, it'll turn on the N-channel, for example. Okay. And uh, but it, when once those, and then essentially when the other signal comes along, it turns off that device. Here's a way to think about it. So let's say ch uh, the input on channel 1 comes up first. That's going to turn on the P-channel device. When the input from 2 comes along, okay, at some phase difference, it's going to shut off that P-channel device. Okay, so once that's off, this output is essentially high impedance. Okay, so it's, it's essentially going to dump some charge, maybe, into the capacitor of the loop filter. Okay, but then uh, in the other case, if this guy was leading, when this guy comes on, it will turn on the end device. And then when the other guy comes along, it'll turn on the P device and shut that, or excuse me, we'll, we'll shut off the end device. So that, uh, so in this case, we're going to be pushing charge onto this capacitor. And in the case where uh, N2 is leading, we're going to be pulling charge off of that capacitor. So you can kind of see how we're going to do this kind of charge pump action. Okay. Again, this has some good, good features and bad features about it as well. The good thing particularly is that it, uh, it is a frequency detection, so it doesn't have that ambiguous uh, quality that the uh, Type 1 phase detector had when it came to uh, detecting frequency. And it won't lock on harmonic signals, and it doesn't have to have 50% duty cycle signals. It's not as good at working with uh, noisy signals as Type 1 phase detector is. So let's look at that output. Okay. So in order to make this work, since this, uh, this node here is open circuit you know, most of the time, Okay, when the signals are in phase. I'm adding a little two resistors here from VCC to ground so that I can have a, an established voltage here. We'll be able to see a positive blip or a negative blip depending on which signal is leading or lagging. Okay, so I can take this probe here and take a look at, uh, actually I think I've already got a probe on that, I do. So that probe is actually channel 3. So I'm going to turn channel 3 on. Okay, so I've got these same signals on here that I was looking at before and now they're in phase and we can see I don't really see any voltage going on here on the uh, that de phase detector output because those signals are in phase. If I go and adjust the phase of this again, okay, we're going to see what happens. So if I adjust that phase, okay, so now that lower one is leading, and we can see I'm getting positive blips on that phase detector output. Okay, if I adjust the phase such that the top one is leading, now I'm getting negative blips. So the nice thing about this, we get an indication of whether we're, which signal is leading and which one is lagging. And we don't really get that, uh, that indication from the, the first type of phase detector. So, so this is kind of nice from that standpoint. And the same property is what means that what will make this work uh, for a frequency difference. We'll actually get an indication in the right direction if we have a large frequency difference between um, these two signals. Okay, So that's how that phase detector works. Okay, so now we've got enough information here, we can go close the loop on this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is disconnect that little test circuit that I had on that phase detector. Okay, so that's disconnected now. And I'm going to take this probe that was used to probe ch the, the channel 2 input, I'm going to use that and probe the VCO output. And I'm going to take now the other input to the, VCO, uh, to the phase detector and connect it right to the VCO output. So now I've closed the loop, I've made this so, thing. Uh, so now I'm looking at kind of my locked condition. Uh, so uh, let's see, channel two here, which is uh, this guy right here. That guy is actually the input signal that I'm coming in from my signal generator here. Okay, and that's what I'm triggering on. The upper waveform here is channel one. That's actually the output of the VCO of this uh, PLL circuit. This trace here is the output of uh, phase detector type 2, 
and you can see little blips up or down, right? Because as this loop is kind of keeping itself closed, sometimes it's giving me a little bit of an up, sometimes giving a little bit of a down to kind of keep that loop closed. And then this guy right here is the output of face detector type one, okay? Where it's not used in the loop, we're just using it here to uh, kind of show if we have any phase difference, okay? So now, if I take a look at the, the frequency counter, I'm sitting right at 10 kilohertz. That's looking at the output of the VCO. Okay, and we can see I'm putting a 10 kilohertz signal in. So if I adjust this, say if I adjust this down to say 8 kilohertz, if I look over here, I can see I've got 8 kilohertz coming out of the VCO, and I can see the signals here. If I watch the scope as I change frequency, you can kind of see how the loop is kind of closing. And I've purposely you know, set this circuit up so that the loop filter takes a while to settle. So you can actually see as I change the frequency, you see how the, the top waveform and the, the, the phase detector waveforms have to kind of take some time to settle in. I kind of did that so you can kind of see how that loop is kind of pulling itself in there. Okay, so that's how the phase detector or the, the phase lock loop works. We're changing essentially the input signal here, and we're letting the loop close and adjust the VCO to close that loop, and uh, and that's what we're getting. Uh, so. Um, one of the things that, that's very popular to do with uh, phase lock loop circuits is to do what we call frequency synthesis. And you can do that by, uh, by playing some games with the signals that come into the phase detector. If I throw a divider in here, for example, say I put a divide by two in here, okay? What that means is, remember the phase detector is gonna want these two things to match in frequency and phase. So now if I put 10 kilohertz in here, okay? It's still going to want to see 10 kilohertz here, which means this VCO is going to have to generate 20 kilohertz to make that happen. Okay, so by simply doing that divide by two, I've actually now created a signal that is phase locked to this reference, but is in twi twice the frequency of that reference. Okay, if I put a divider in here, that would have the opposite effect now, right? So uh, cause if I divided this reference down, okay, that will cause the VCO to go to a lower voltage. So one of them kind of multiplies the output, one divides the output, and you can kind of think about this and say, well, I could have any ratio, divide ratio here and here, so I can synthesize any output frequency that I want based on setting these dividers to the appropriate ratios. And that's how the synthesizers in your synthesized receivers work and things like that. Okay, so let's actually go do that. Okay, let's knock this down, let's say I'm at, you know, say six, six kilohertz here. I got a six kilohertz there. Both those signals are in phase and they're locked. I can see I've got a six kilohertz output. On this board, uh, this guy right here is a little D flip flop that I've got wired up as a divide by two. So all I need to do is move this wire over to here. Now I've put that divide by two in circuit right there. Okay. So now I've got a, a six kilohertz signal here. But if I look at the output on the frequency counter, I'm at 12 kilohertz. And if I look over at the waveforms, I can actually see the output of my VCO is now at 12 kilohertz. It's phase aligned to the 6 kilohertz input. Okay. And again, if I adjust the frequency of the, my signal generator, I can actually see that I'm always going to be twice that frequency. Okay. So that's one example of how a, uh, a phase lock loop circuit can be used to do frequency multiplication. Okay. And uh, basically frequency synthesis. So anyway, this... Uh, I hope this video was helpful in uh, you know, giving you a little bit of an understanding of uh, what phase lock loop circuits are and how they operate. Again, this one that I'm using here is this CD4046. In fact, if you look at the block diagram here of this, very similar to what we described, described. there's two phase detectors, okay, phase comparator one and two, that's your type one, that's your type two, okay. That puts out, you know, uh, an output that can go through a low pass filter, a simple low pass filter here into the tune input to the VCO, okay, and the output of the VCO we can loop back into the phase detector input, okay. There's a couple of other components that are used to kind of set up the frequency range of the VCO, but other than that it's a pretty simple thing. This circuit's been around a really long time, you can find them, you know, pretty pretty easily. Uh, in fact, the one I've got on my board here is actually an old Motorola device, there's the data sheet for it. Motorola puts a little one in the front of the part number here, so an MC14046B. In fact, the parts that I've got in this board, the one sitting in here, it's actually got a date code on it from 1979. So uh, these circuits have been around uh, quite a while. So, uh, but they're fun to play with and they're pretty easy to use. Um, the tricky thing is sometimes designing the component values for the loop filter 
but there's plenty of application notes and books and such that are written that describe, uh, you know, kind of how you do that. Uh, but anyway, I hope this has given you a little bit of a background of, uh, of phase lock loops. And All right, one more little bit of extra credit here. Um, we were looking at the, these waveforms here from uh, this phase lock loop that right now is doing a 2x voltage multiplication. And when the phase detector waveforms are not very interesting because this loop is closed and locked. Uh, but a little extra credit here, what I'm going to do is yank a little bit on this voltage here. Uh, kind of inject a little bit of an offset in the output of the loop filter. And what that's going to do is cause the loop to try to compensate for that offset. So it's going to basically inject a phase offset okay, to compensate for the voltage offset I'm adding here. So I've done the same thing. I've got my little power supply here that I'm driving into the tune input through a resistor okay, just to yank on that voltage a little bit. So, um, so right now I'm not really yanking on it at all, but as I adjust if I yank on it a little bit, we can actually see a phase change happen. All right, see that phase change happen? But also notice that on the phase detector outputs that I've, in this case, I've caused the, my VCO to lead, okay? So if the VCO is now leading in phase, the output of the phase detector is gonna pull down on that voltage to try to bring it back. And we could also see the phase change here on the phase detector one output. Now if I adjust the voltage the other way, okay, now, now I'm basically lined up again. If I keep going and cause the phase detect the my VCO now to lag, okay, that's going to cause the phase detector two output to go positive to try to pull that phase back in again and bring it back over, okay. And you still see the phase the phase change here in phase detector one output. So you can very easily see how that loop is compensating for an offset in phase, okay. And this is a way of actually injecting a phase change. If you wanted to do like phase shift keying or something like that on an RF signal, you can inject a, uh, a signal here to cause a phase change to happen. Okay, so a little bit of extra credit just to kind of show how that loop kind of tries to close everything and keep the phase as seen at the phase detector inputs um, uh, close to zero. And uh, it can do so by adjusting the phase of things throughout the loop. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, Comments are welcome. Thank you.